How do we enjoy the one again? She's just gonna pop in. Sorry. Sorry. Is Lonnie gonna pop it on the screen? Um well, there we are. Yeah. There we are. <laughs> Exciting. This is like one of those closed <laughs> caption TV things. You know, like I think we're about ready, Lonnie. Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, great. Hi, Lonnie. Hello. Hi. <laughs> okay. okay, go ahead. I call this meeting to order. Welcome to the October 11th, 2023 special meeting of the Art in Public Places Committee. The recording secretary, Lonnie, will take roll. Committee member Azadarian. Present. Committee member Faulkner. Here. Committee member Nathanson. Present. Committee member Puentes is absent. Committee member Stewart is absent. Vice Chair Kiefer. Present. Chair Baumgartner. Present. Let the record reflect that all committee members are present with the exception of committee member Puentes and committee member Stewart. Thank you. Um, item, the scheduled items, item 3.1 is ad hoc task forces, proposed work plans and timelines. Staff will facilitate a discussion about the proposed work plans for each of the current task forces. And this action recommended is discussion. Great, um, thank you all. This item has been on a couple agendas to try to get a conversation going about the direction for the ad hoc task forces. Um, so at the last meeting, we had a very brief conversation um, and, oh, let's see, let me see who's there. Hold on one second. Okay. Oh, false alarm. Um, <laughs> okay, so at the last meeting, we had a brief conversation where I shared um, a kind of background document. Does anyone need this today? I have a few copies. Okay, let me know if that would be helpful. I, I can send them around. Um, yeah, bring it down. Yeah. Don't take long and pass them if you need it. So this document um, was intended to kind of summarize the history and process of the formation of the task forces, where the uh, idea came from, what the goals were originally stated to be, um, how we worked with Kimson Creative on some support and mentoring for the task forces, and then how we ended up with the proposed work plans, just as kind of helpful background, really. Um, and then what we also talked about last time was um, what would be most helpful to actually take what is drafted here to uh, kind of to, to get to a point at which um, members of the committee feel like they know what steps to take to start working on these items. Um, because these are hefty work plans that are detailed and comprehensive and overwhelming. Um, so <laughs> just to put it out there. So one of the things we talked about was um, comparing the work plans with our annual plan as a way to say, where are we already saying we're investing time and money in our annual plan? Are those things that are also identified in the task forces, is that something that we can kind of hone in on that has a budget associated with it? So there's funds to support that work um, whether that's doing open houses or some kind of community outreach events, things like that. Um, so I do have a couple copies of the work plan if anyone wants to see those. It was also attached to the agenda if you need one. Um, so um, so that, that's kind of what, where we got to at the last meeting. And then there was a, a desire to make sure that more, more members were a part of the conversation. And so it was really kind of a tabled conversation um, to today. Uh, so here we are today. Um, I think the goals for today would be to really first, I mean, address any questions that there might be about the material that's been submitted. Um, uh, really talk about, you know, is there 
Uh, let me find my notes from last time. Um, are, are the objectives clear about what the task forces are supposed to be doing? Um, where do committee members feel like their strengths lie or their interests in, in working on, on these work plans? Uh, I, I think if, if I think if we kind of start there, like clarifying questions, um, are the objectives clear? Does it help to look at them side by side with the work plan and associated funding? And then individual committee members, like where where do you want to interface with this work? Like, do you want to stay on the task force that you were? Do you is are, is there a specific task in a different area that you really want to be a part of working on? So. I think that you know we have the opportunity to really start kind of from scratch. We don't have to stick with the task forces structure that we had come up with originally. So I, I just encourage folks to, um, you know, all, all everything's on the table. All, yeah. all ideas are good ideas at this point to consider and discuss. So um, wherever you want to start with that conversation, I think is fine. It's a conversation today. It's a discussion. There's no action. Right. needing to be taken so really open discussion is encouraged and since public comments can only happen in person now and not on zoom there's no one from the public here so i mean if there was we would make, make need to make sure we're asking for public comments but we can right. clearly see that there isn't anyone right. so i think just continue having an open conversation unless a member of the public does show up then we will need to ask for a public comment okay great so no, nobody here to harass us. Yeah. <laughs> Knock on. It's, yeah, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, it's been yeah. troubling. Yeah. And do you want folks to just chime in or do you want to facilitate and call on people? It's up to you. I think look, I, I think at our size, we could just chime in. Do you guys feel like we could just talk? Mm -hmm. I think it'd be really great if we could be a bit um, honest and feel free to process with each other how we're kind of approaching this and what questions we have and where we see ourselves, things like that. I think this is totally for this discussion. There's nothing else on the agenda. Well, I've had discussions with some of you one-on-one, um, -on -one, which I've appreciated yeah. a lot. Um, and um, I know Debel and I um, are both sort of sitting here with, it's like, okay, we're supposed to be on this task force together, but um, you're you're now uh, theoretically sitting in, in Melanie's seat, and um, Melanie and I kind of struggled with community engagement because it was during COVID, and we finally figured out that well, what we could do is something a little bit more concrete as we were coming out of COVID, and we had um, some public art projects to. Um, celebrate and, and dedicate. And, and so we um, really, to Melanie's credit, because she kind of took took the lead on it uh, for a mural and, um, and sculpture, uh, you know, dedication ceremony and public event, helped to organize it and said, okay, well, this is an important form of community engagement. But I think she and I both felt that um, there was really um, that we had difficulty um, really understanding or, or, or coming up with a plan for how we could promote community engagement and how that really was um, not completely interlinked with the uh, DEAI um, you know, diversity uh, goals of that task force. And, and then I know when you and I spoke, it was right. like, well, should, are these the right task force? Forces. I mean, is this the right way to divide it up? And so I, I just wanted to maybe make these comments to help frame the discussion because um, I think we we all accepted that, okay, the, the uh, strategic plan and the division of the various task forces Seems to, it seemed to make sense. So now it's, I guess I'm asking the question, does it still make sense? Mm -hmm. And um, does it make sense? I mean, I'm almost thinking, would it be better for us to like pull them apart and just say, okay, well, what if we just had a blank canvas? And how do we, get, how do we um, best uh, 
structure task forces or let's say just a work plan in general so that we can be effective in addressing the goals of the strategic plan. So I'm not saying I have answers, but I- Pull apart the yeah. these individual task forces and maybe create new, yeah. is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm just saying maybe, maybe uh, consider what, what were the stated goals of the task forces, mm -hmm. but separate them from the actual name of the task force and really say, well, here's concepts that we want to address. Mm -hmm. Are these the right teams? You know, do, do, is there a better way to divide it up? I, yes. I would support this conversation in kind of pulling up apart kind of like the specifics of each of the task forces um, and taking out more bite sized actionable items. Um, mm -hmm. That would be something that I know I would work with better. So. Uh, just under the lens of the community engagement you know, task force, uh, I, I think it would be strategic to think about what events are happening in our community and how that as, how that aligns with our assigned areas. So, uh, in looking at, sorry, I'm just jumping in. I'm not. I haven't been focusing on community engagement, but I have some ideas. Uh, mm -hmm. I think this is something I would be passionate about uh, in terms of increasing and sustaining community participation. Uh, part of that could be, you know, going out to events like right now, the mural project is going on in Santa Rosa and kind of talking to some of them, talking about that process. Is that an event that we want to support in our community and how so what would break down the barriers to that? Um, that I see is something that would be a good goal of community engagement. So I didn't need to cut you off. You to jump in. I, do we have a sense of what uh, the existing demands on the committee's times are relative to maintenance of existing projects? Like, you know, it seems like it might make sense to think about the next four or five years in terms of what's already sort of on the docket and then, you know, how that might affect the time that we have mm -hmm. to allocate towards, you know, restructuring mm -hmm. these kinds of project development. Yeah, I mean, I think that the the committee meetings are the only kind of formal commitment for the committee. Mm -hmm. um, so that's once a month for one and a half hours. But as you know, we've had several cancellations, special meetings. So the maybe double that if we're going to continue having special meetings, but it's fluc it fluctuates month to month. In addition to that, there are, um, when we do a selection process, there's one or two representatives from the committee on those selection panels. So as you know, right now, you're serving on the one for the fire station project. There's, uh, you know, that's not for all committee members, but could rotate throughout the course of a couple of years, depending on what projects we have coming up. Uh, those are the only two like commitments, I would say at this point, other, other things like going to events, representing yourself in the arts community, wearing your name tag, where you go. I mean, those are optional in engagements for you to consider as you're available to attend those things. Um, and then, and, and then I think we look at, okay, what the, the, these work plans were an attempt to kind of organize actual uh, kind of yeah, tasks that committee members could perform to help implement the strategic plan. But I mean, realistically, it's going to add significant, anything that we do within that framework is going to add significantly to the workload for you and Jessica, right? Not, not necessarily. I think some more so than others. Others may not be so much. But yes, I mean, if you're talking about we as in staff being included in that too, then yes, um, there is some considerations for that. But I think that the goal in providing such a detailed work plan was for you to say, go do task one. And here's the support you might need from staff. So it, it really tried to break it down the way that, that it was written to specifically 
uh, try to mitigate the amount of additional staff time that would be needed. It, it, it's not, you know, 100%, obviously, yes, Jessica and my time is still needed to support the work, but do you know what I mean? It's, mm -hmm. It was, it, there was an attempt to make it as kind of independent as possible mm -hmm. from that. Thinking about the staff time, Tara, um, is this, I, I know that the, like the um, Geo, Juilliard Park summer series is time consuming. Um, and uh, I assume also when there was uh, the season for uh, the Wednesday night market, and it, there's certain times when it seems like there's a lot more activity that um, you and Jessica are involved in is right now, let's say fall through um, late winter. Is that a, a slightly, you know, yeah. reduced workload? I'm just trying to think in terms of um, yeah, if, we, if we ask for staffing report, uh, 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 support, is there a is this a good time to be doing this or does it just not matter? <laughs> I, I don't think it matters that much. Um, I mean, yes, there are busier event seasons, um, but but I, yeah, we're we're always busy. Okay. So I don't think that there's um, yeah, I, I I wouldn't say that there's a specific time of year that's consistent. I think it just there just needs to be I think a, an expectation like if if the committee is 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 somehow you know organized in a way where there's work like being done on one assigned area of one of these work plans. I think it's just a kickoff kind of meeting with staff to say, okay, we're gonna jump in on this one. Is this a good time to do it? <laughs> um, here's what we think we're gonna need from staff. And when do you think you can provide that? I think it's just clear expectations from the beginning about what is needed and what's possible. What about the projects that you're working on now, like um, the beautification project, all the murals and stuff that you're contracting to have out. Does it make sense for us to come around those kind of things in terms of inviting and creating events or places where people to highlight attention on those things to create, I'm so, I don't know if you already have that kind of stuff planned, but in the sense of like reaching out, I'm just talking about community engagement, mm -hmm. reaching out to the public, making places where people can gather and celebrate what's happening or, or know about mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Is that realistic? Is that something that, or would you rather just be, are you just trying to do those things and let, is that mm -hmm. more of a contractual thing you have with the venue? Yeah, if that, I think that those types of things generally need to be more staff driven because of the nuances of what the type of contract is for the work that's being performed uh -huh. Uh -huh. and whose responsibility it is to do what based on that scope of work. So uh -huh. um, that doesn't mean that the committee can't be involved once there's something set up yeah. or it's clear what's needed. Um, but I don't think that that should be on the committee or the task forces to initiate necessarily. Mm -hmm. I think that the type of engagement things identified in this plan are more helpful than um, project-based things mm -hmm. specifically for that reason. But uh, that, that doesn't mean that there's no involvement from committee members to support the efforts that are going on. Um, but for example, there's a lot of nuances with the murals that are happening now that the city needs to control that process rather than the APPC. Mm -hmm. Because it's not an APPC funded program, first of all. Oh, oh. It's yeah. ARPA funds and it's through the Economic Development Division. So Gotcha. It, there, so think that's as an example why it gets a little bit. That doesn't mean that the committee members can't be champions for, hey, all the cool new public art that's coming out. And so maybe what, mm -hmm. what staff could provide for something like this is kind of like a toolkit or instructions to committee members on how they can interact with this or what they can say or what they can share. Um, but it does get a little bit tricky project by project, depending on what kind of project it is. Mm -hmm. We need to maintain uh, like a two member structure though. Is that um, in order to three the is the maximum. The so there could be three, not necessarily just two. Yeah. Three is the maximum that can meet without needing to notice the public. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Um, 
And I know the Office of Community Engagement was um, eliminated. Correct. And that's actually supposed to be on the Community Engagement Task Force. Yeah. You know, you oh. interact with that right. in the office. So uh, is there a another office that, um, or a, besides, I guess, um, Yes, you there, will yeah. <laughs> there will be. There will be. Who do we work with? Yeah, the the communications <laughs> team, um, the the city's communications and intergovernmental intergovernmental relations um, team, uh, CIRO for short, um, is uh, is is now the department that will house the community engagement mm -hmm. programming, um, but they're in the process of hiring new staff. So right now. There isn't necessarily a community engagement manager to work with, but there will be in the future. So um, I think that there's some things that the director of that team could help with if they're if specifically identified. But some of the area, uh, some of the tasks related to that may need to wait until that division is kind of up and running again. Mm -hmm. Can you say that name again? The city communication. Yeah, it's zero communications. Inter and intergovernmental relations. Okay. <laughs> Office. Well, I, as it is, if I, you know, sort of think about trying to develop something or reaching out to someone, I, you know, I would really just pass them Jessica's email or yours at mm -hmm. this point because I, you know, I'm unclear about what funds are available to support the, you know, the something what, or yeah. what the grant cycles are. Well, what what kind of uh, what what kind of interaction do you think would lead you to do that? Uh, well, like that um, that fair is coming back. The DLA mm -hmm. folks mm -hmm. run that um, uh, um, that art fair. That alternative art fair. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you know, it happened that I put I put the organizer for that in touch with uh, Jessica, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, there happened to be a grant available, you know, that was mm -hmm. closing in the next few days, mm -hmm. and so they applied, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know, like that seems fine to me. Uh, so if if an organization is seeking funding, uh -huh. then you kind of always have to then refer that back to staff. Right. The committee doesn't can't right. Right, for, right, directly yeah. fund yeah, yeah. things, right? So, I mean, I feel like if that's the question you're getting or the request, that's the answer is you just say, please check with staff. I'm putting you in touch with Tara or Jessica, mm -hmm. right? Um, if the question is, hey, is Santa Rosa a, like a good arts community to bring this event to? I mean, uh -huh. then you can provide that, your sense of that, right? You sure. can help connect them with folks in the community that they may want to talk to. Um, if they want to know how to propose a new sculpture somewhere. I think, again, you can tell them what your role is on the committee, but that they probably need to speak with the staff on what calls for artists are coming up, what funding is available, et cetera. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that there's, if it would be helpful to have some kind of flow chart that's like, yeah. if this, yeah. then do this, um, then maybe that's maybe more helpful uh, to understand that. But um, yeah, I, I think that it's, the reason why these task forces were developed with such clear tasks is so that it is clear what you can do. Yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. So like, like, for instance, let's just go into community engagement. Um, let's just skip to like assigned area three. Seek regular input from the business community. Yeah. That's pretty broad and yeah. vague, but that's the stated goal, right? So a suggestion is to draft strategies for the whole committee to consider, such as including business representatives on the advisory board, doing regular surveys, et cetera. So the task for that, whoever's doing this one, would be to assess where business community could be engaged through meeting invites and the advisory committee. So it's like is there a way to review what we're already doing where we could make sure we're keeping the business community in mind for how they could engage with that? It's not creating necessarily new engagements all the time. Yeah. It's keeping that in mind. It's like it, you are that you're, you're the placeholder for that. You're holding yeah. that within our conversation. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. So that for Thank that, you. that's as an example. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I don't, 
I don't feel like it makes sense to throw this out or to, you know, sort of re restructure. I mean, this is like a year's worth of work. How about are people focusing on the areas that they want to be on? I, you know, can we just sort of merge these conversations? Is that okay? Yes, of course. I mean, I think that like, I mean, there, there seemed to be some, well, Jeff, I think suggested that like, what if instead of being divided up into task force, yeah. task, task forces, the three different ones, just like all of the assigned areas, all of the objectives were just all put together into one big work plan. Yep. I mean, we could look at it that way and then people can say, well, I'm really interested in this. I feel like I have skills to help with this. Right. Or that's where my strengths are. This is where I want to focus. Then we can kind of get a sense of, well, which areas have folks wanting to participate and then we group people together and they don't necessarily have to be divided into the task forces. I mean, that is one way to not really throw this out, but to reorganize it a bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, I, I, and what I was thinking about when I suggested we look at the, the tasks rather than the assigned teams um, more as a whole is I know that there's some overlap with the goals and uh, some of the assigned tasks. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I, I think you stated that really well, Tara, that maybe what we do is we we try to um, um, process this in a way that people are really um, signed up for things that they feel they can sink their teeth into, that they have some passion or, or at least a skill set that they can pr provide. Mm -hmm. um, I, but I do respect the, the structure a lot, and I know a lot of work went into it. So I don't want, I don't want to just toss it out. Yeah. no, I don't want to toss yeah. it out. I just want to make sure that we all agree that we either accept it in its current form or we consider um, maybe shifting around a mm -hmm. couple of the things so that they make more sense for this group of people. So Jeff, when you say that, when you said shifting around, um, so, and uh, excuse me too, since I did come in late, and I hope I'm not um, saying something that has already been explained. Um, so when our, we do have teams um, and we have these tasks, and let's say an individual takes one of those tasks, is that up in the responsible for that team or is it just going to be that individual? Um. Well, maybe uh, backing up to what first um, motivated my comments earlier, um, I'd had individual conversations with um, some members of this committee mm -hmm. that um, in which we were really kind of asking questions about um, what community engagement and the DEIA task force have some parallel or even overlapping goals and and so it's to me it was okay should we be looking at these um as maybe a, more of a totality of the the assigned tasks mm -hmm. and and what the goals of these two task forces are and um either we're just shifting members around or we're actually thinking about um, a way of coordinating the work so that we're not um, overlapping or, mm -hmm. um, you know, working on the same thing in a parallel manner when we should just be working together. Mm -hmm. And and that can also um, influence and impact the project development planning. Because, I mean, I think of things holistically. So I'm going, well, if diversity and inclusion are really important mm -hmm. um, goals of ours and community engagement is really important, how do those concepts uh, influence or impact what the project development um, process is mm -hmm. and, and how do we connect those dots effectively. So I'm just trying to think of practical ways mm -hmm. that we accomplish what these goals are. And, and I'm not quite sure that I understand how the work plan does that in practical Mm -hmm. Kind of week to week terms. Yes. So, I because I, I want to know how I fit in and how I can be most effective. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> you no, know, exactly. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's great. That's exactly. Uh, may I? Yes. So, 
when over when reading these, overlooking them, I saw the the task force. The idea of sort of isolated or separated task forces might be awkward because perhaps there is a committee member who is on the uh, is on the uh, the business and development team, or excuse me, the community. community. Yeah, the yeah. community engagement team. Um, reaching out to a local organization or, or company or artist. And then that person also would like to be involved with um, other issues regarding diversity, equity, inclusion, and access to the, the DEIA team. But they say, oh, I'm sorry, you'll have to actually contact that other committee member when we're uh, not a very large committee and I think we can all speak together. So rather than approach these separately of task forces, why don't we just say this is the APPC committee, and these are our tasks, not task forces, but we have a task in, to do. We have a task to do community engagement. We have a task to do DEIA. We have a task to do um, the last one, project development. And then we, we approach that all. So our energies and our natural occurring opportunities throughout our day as Santa Rosa community citizens, whenever they should pop up in those categories, we would invite them and be involved. Just to, logistically, can we communicate? Can we send a mass email to everyone on the? Yeah, I, I think that's. Yeah, so that's get weird. That's yeah. why there was the structure of the task forces created, mm -hmm. because um, there are laws, the Brown Act uh, rules related to c c committee members communicating with the majority or, or a quorum for or more of uh, the, the members um, for, to for or more total. So you plus three, uh, you get it. Um, so anyway, the, the, the task forces were small, two or three members, so that you avoided those rules and you could meet without having to have a publicly noticed mm -hmm. meeting. You could communicate through email with each other. And then essentially when you're ready to bring a full discussion to the committee, then it gets put on the agenda and the whole committee can discuss an item or, um, or, or whatever. So, so that, that's why that structure, if, you know, if there's another way to achieve that, that doesn't like, I'm all for that, but I think that that that's the mechanism we felt like we had to use to avoid violations of the Brown Act. Because ad hoc task forces, meaning, Task forces, smaller groups of members that are um, working on specific items that when those items are completed, that task force goes away. That, that's the definition that allows us to do this structure where there's three, two or three members meeting, communicating, doing work on a more regular basis that doesn't have to be publicly noticed okay. and, and follow those rules. So. Um, that doesn't still like I still like the idea like of looking at everything, taking away like community engagement, yeah. DEIA, project development, putting it all in some kind of maybe it's funny because we started this with a spreadsheet and then that felt too overwhelming to look at in a spreadsheet. So we put it in more of like a linear word document mm -hmm. like this. But I wonder if we should go back to the spreadsheet because then I think you could see things and you could go, okay, well, this kind of falls into a communication outward with the community category. Maybe we lump all of those together, regardless of what their task force was originally. And then I think folks could start seeing where the things kind of um, need to work together rather than separately so that there aren't duplicate efforts going on. Um, and then also I think, hold on one second. I think that then if folks are identifying I want to be involved with this. You put your name next to that. Someone else puts their name next to another. Then you start seeing like where the groupings might be because mm -hmm. then I think those people could then work together on those items mm -hmm. or work separately but then come together when needed. Or do you know what I mean? It's like those could maybe form those smaller work groups. They don't have to be task forces. They could just be work groups that then you're doing those tasks. Yeah. And then you come back to the committee to have the the larger discussion yeah. when you need to. So I was wondering if the larger discussion could be some of the more kind of big picture thinking, um, even looking at like to the spreadsheet and kind of saying we identify, even having a regular part of our meetings that mm -hmm. actually were like we revisit this, we say what's where are we where are we moving and then continually pull the amount of people we can yeah. that goes off a little bit. Yeah. 
Is that kind of what you're thinking, Paul, or is it? It sounds right to me. Yeah. Uh, I think, um, and you know, whatever is necessary to achieve goals, but uh, we should make progress. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's been a, mo a feeling over, obviously it's been COVID and we were meeting online for so many years um, of being kind of isolated and I'm in this group and I have to stay within this, but if I kind of lost the vision, there was no one that was looking at it with each of our committees in a bigger group and saying, mm -hmm. where are we going with this? Is this, yeah. is this still vital? Are we still moving in the right direction? I welcome more conversation that way. Um, another thought is, um, I, I might be wrong, but um, it, I think that each one of these task forces, the way that they have been structured, has um, two, or and I guess in one case, three people, and they don't have overlapping members. And another um, way of looking at this could be that um, if we allow for more of... Um, I know like shared membership or we divide up, let's say, okay, uh, outward communications is one category that is going to in, be inclusive of community engagement, DEAI, and even a certain amount of project development, you know, listening to the community. Um, whoever the, let's say three people, because we can't go beyond three, but there were three people working on that, um, is there any reason why one of them couldn't represent that team's work in a, let's say, team or task force meeting that's looking more specifically at, let's say, project development or internal um, work plan development? Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the, the shared document, like, could we share? A spreadsheet or a Google Doc or whatever, and sort of deal with the Brown Act questions just by doing that, where everyone's no, you can't be inputting. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, there, there's definitely some um, constraints yeah. with what, uh, as a public entity, what, what, what public meetings mean, and um, mm -hmm. I can like essentially I can be the keeper of something that mm -hmm. I add things to and then send out to all committee members, but it has to also be publicly available. So it would have to be presented at a public <laughs> meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. Otherwise the smaller groups of three or less can do their work, share a spreadsheet amongst the three of them yeah. and develop something. But when it's shared or discussed as a whole group, yeah. it has yeah. to be in public. The, the, the requirement essentially, is the intention is that the, the committee has to do its business in the public. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the task forces will do their tasks, come to a, a conclusion or a plan mm -hmm. or an, a, an agenda item, which they will submit to the meeting. And then we will deal with it amongst all of us at the meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So we will have meetings and that, that's what for the public meetings are. So we can be here as well as be, you know, heard by our public. Mm -hmm. I think that we, it's been difficult to, when we've been sharing the things, it hasn't been with the intention for getting a lot of feedback from each other. We haven't had that expectation. So the um, probably a reworking of the way we think about and mm -hmm. channel them. And I think it'd be healthy mm -hmm. that we would be coming with anything we were working on with the idea of inviting mm -hmm. feedback, mm -hmm. um, and people being attentive that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, one way to do it so that it's maybe more streamlined is to have one big worksheet, spreadsheet, that has everything in it. And then once folks have, like, signed up for certain tasks, mm -hmm. maybe we then take that those out and say, this is what we're currently going to be working on, mm -hmm. and not the whole thing, right? Yeah. Like, isolate. Right. But then at each committee meeting, there is a standing item on our regular meeting agendas. That's mm -hmm. task force mm -hmm. report outs, essentially. Yeah. And so that spreadsheet could have status reports, status updates at an area where every month then there's something that the, the members who are working on those tasks are putting in there. Like, I did this. I met with the blah, blah, blah. I met with, you know, whatever it is. 
that that then that spreadsheet and its updates every month or as needed could then be shared at those regular meetings and discussed because that's how you would report out at the public meeting. Yeah. Well, should we just start with task one? For <laughs> <laughs> which task force? Well, all of them. I mean, that's three jobs. Yeah, that's what I wanted to. Is there a yeah. priority that you feel that you and Jessica feel like if you were to know that we were going to operate this way and start pulling, mm -hmm. would you just go one down, one down or, is it, or would you revisit it? Well, I, I think I, I'm more interested in having the committee members feel really engaged, that they know what to do on the item that they're signed up for, that they feel like that's a good use of their time and they have that time. Mm -hmm rather than Jessica and I saying, we want you to do this. Got it. Okay. So okay. I'd rather not look at it from that point of view. I'd mm -hmm. rather have it come from the committee members. So whatever the best way to do that is, like I think the, the overlay with what our priorities are should be the annual work plan. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. this is helpful to members, I think that the next step I would suggest is that we go, I think we still have a version of this in a spreadsheet format. Mm -hmm. I could add a column for committee members to sign up <laughs> or say, not necessarily sign up, but like maybe you prioritize yourself. Like like, one. like one, two, and three, these are the, the things that I'm most interested in participating in. I, I don't know. Something like that. We could come up with some version of that. But then there could also be a column that identifies, does this have funding allocated in our annual work plan? Because that could be a determining factor for you, right? Like, yeah. do I want to sign up for something that doesn't have any resources to help do it right now? Maybe not. So, yeah. so maybe that's, uh, I don't, that, that would be one way to go as a next step. Actually, you mentioning um, budget or, or resources makes me think that, well, the, the driving um, reason for there to be a budget um, you know, it, it, for the city to have approved funding, it's usually it's it's because there's a project, there's something to be accomplished, and so thinking about workflow, it seems to me that if we have projects that are already um, planned and scheduled, there are tasks to be addressed or community engagement around those projects. Uh, you know, there's the DEIA goals of in, engaging the community in a, in a more inclusive manner. Um, and then when we talk about project development, we are talking about, well, what are we doing to um, look to the future and what are, what are new projects being developed? And I think we um, said at the previous or two, previous meetings ago that um, this year we are basically focusing on getting the projects that are already scheduled accomplished. So yeah, um, but Jeff, I want to inter yeah. interject mm -hmm. there for a second. That's that that's one small piece of the picture and not the priority. The priority is for the task forces to help implement the strategic plan, which mm -hmm. are not projects. Okay. The strategic yeah. plan is community engagement and input, governance and administration, programming and projects, yes, mm -hmm. but to a lesser degree because those are what we always have done, right? right. And then PR and marketing. So mm -hmm. the task forces were formed with the tasks and the assigned areas specifically to do all the other stuff right. that mm -hmm. is called for in our strategic plan because the program didn't have enough there, didn't have enough going on there to begin mm -hmm. with. Okay. And so it was really to engage the c uh, committee members in, in helping us do better in those areas mm -hmm. because we're, we can do the projects, that we, we do projects. That yeah. doesn't mean that there's additional community engagement that shouldn't be happening with our projects. Mm -hmm but I don't think that that's the priority of the task forces. Yeah. This is for the sustainability of you know, improving the voice between the yeah. city government and mm -hmm. the people. Yeah, that's right. a great yeah. way to put it. Yeah, yeah. this, is, this, is, this is, is making a clear process that theoretically is gonna go now to forever. It's not, a, not at one time like, hey, let's go shake hands and we're done. Yeah. No, this right. is forever the city is committing to an action of always knowing its people and always talking to its people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I guess in my mind, it's creating something that has a concrete application. So we're in a, in a sense, um, we're talking in theory, but when I think about a project, I think about something that physically will exist, even if that is a quarterly town hall meeting about arts and culture or some other vehicle through which we get community input and we can have a dialogue. Yeah. Right. And Those things will come to fruition after the actions of the task forces right. to hear what the people say and how they want it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, the open houses idea was definitely something that had, was already identified as something the APPC should take on as mm -hmm. a project. So that that kind of goes without saying that I think that that needs to happen. And there are steps in the community engagement task force to start that process. Mm -hmm. So I think that, like, yes, there will be concrete things, but there's steps to start doing now mm -hmm. to get to a regular open house that the committee knows that they can always come twice a year to meet the members and hear what we're doing. That will be ultimately the outcome, right? Hopefully yeah. something like that, but there is a process to get yeah. there. Yeah. So in order to start these, do we have to, um, do we have to make a motion and vote to implement these workforce plans or are they already implemented? No, um, yes and no. I, what I would like to do is to get some version of this, whether it's this or a spreadsheet view of it without the names of the task forces dividing them, however the committee feels comfortable, um, have that brought to a meeting where it's on the agenda asking for your approval. Um, because once that, that's approved, then we can say, okay, that is, you know, it doesn't mean that these can't change or be amended over time, but it's being adopted as um, as a as a map to follow, right? And then um, then the work can get started. That's why it, all of your copies should say draft on them. They really truly are drafts. And I noticed that it does say, <laughs> I, I don't know why I have a copy. Oh, that well, it's not yours, is, no, I, yeah. yours is all good. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it does and, say uh, time uh, commitment. Uh, uh, yeah. How, how serious is the time commitment? Are all committee members required to log an, an official time and be penalized if they don't? No, not at all. <laughs> so then there's not a lot of fear. Yeah. It's you jump yeah. in right. the pool when you no, want to swim yep. and do not jump in when you do not want to swim. That's right. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that has been one of the bigger impediments for me is just knowing that this is a, you know, a volunteer position mm -hmm. and that you know, my, my time is valuable. And so if I don't have a concrete action item, I oftentimes struggle oh, to really just sure. apply to theory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like the idea of what you were saying, Tara, to go back to the annual work plan and recommended expenditure plan, and then connect those actions that have expenditure amounts mm -hmm. to the task forces. So as community engagement and input is the first category, that aligns with the community engagement task force in my mind. Um, assigning a budget to these items gives me more motivation, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, and for governance and administration, I see needing to update that uh, line that says partner with OCE mm -hmm. slash VPP and to update that to Coordinate with, um, sorry, what did that Zero. 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 Yes. Yeah. So update with that, mm -hmm. partner with that committee. And um, I guess if there could be connection with our committee about how we should fit in with that, I don't, I don't know if that is part of their plan. Uh, yeah, no, no, I don't, I, I don't know, and I, I doubt that that's on their radar, so that would mean initiating kind of that, since, since it's kind of starting from scratch itself, I think that will essentially okay. mean that, that the collaboration with the committee and with the public art program would kind of need to start over. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Have you heard anything about the public art toolkits? Okay. Yes, yes. I have a meeting with Nico uh, with Kim's and Creative on Friday. Um, there, there is still ongoing work with that. It is add, has been added to his contract scope of work so mm -hmm. that he will be developing a proposed um, way to move forward with that. I, yeah, for me, you know, when I'm looking at, you know, convening a 
group of city employees to meet with the task force to kind of inform things or, uh, you know, kind of inviting people in to participate in the process of the APPC. Like, it's, a, it's kind of a tough ask if there isn't something to offer, or to, you know, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I hear that. I think that that I would encourage everyone to think of it almost exactly in the reverse. You mm -hmm. are there to ask what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Like yeah, we, we want to know how servants. how to awesome. serve the community yeah. better, how to connect with things that others are already doing where there's alignments, right? It's like if you kind of use the example of the general plan update. That had been, I think, a goal of the public art programs for a while is to really get artists more involved in a planning, a, a citywide planning process. Uh -huh. But the way we approached it was to ask the planning team, what do you need that you're not getting out of your process that we could help with? And when they said community engagement specifically with youth, then we mm -hmm. tailored everything we did mm -hmm. with artists to meet their need. Mm -hmm. It still met our goals and it met their goals. And I think that that is a really successful way of looking at how we, especially when it comes to other city departments, other or arts organizations or community groups, um, is to approach it from that point of view. Yeah. You know, I think that, that it's a very different way of working than saying, hey, we're part of the city of Santa Rosa. We have these funds. We want you to apply. Yeah. That's, that's not really what we're doing here. Yeah. We want to know what they're doing, how they think their artists or their community members or whatever need to be supported, what what is interesting to them about art in the community, what do they see as a problem about what art in the community looks like currently, are there gaps, does it not represent everyone? Like Those are the kind of questions I'm interested in. So how do we... Um... How do we record and report back in these kinds of meetings then? Is that something that I, I don't remember? Yeah, I mean, that. I think a lot of these things are, it uh, ha have that um, kind of detailed, or if they don't, uh, in all of them, they, that, that can be added. But I mean, I think that, for example, um, in the DEIA the task force, there's assigned area three prioritize diverse voices in public art programming. Mm -hmm. Um, there's several tasks in there, six. So task number one is fam familiarity with programming, plan with program planning voices. In this action item, task force members will familiarize themselves with the current process involved in a public art program planning or a project planning. Um, they will investigate who historically has been the, the decision makers at what capacity of the planning process their voices have been elevated they will investigate which voices have been historically elevated due to the historic makeup or of decision makers. So, you know, it's like looking at who's making the decisions. So it's kind of like research and data gathering and then identify opportunities for inclusion of diverse voices. So in this task force, uh, in this item, task force members will evaluate where homogeny exists within the public art program planning process and identify priority areas for the inclusion of diverse voices. Um, they will create informational briefs that describe the roles and responsibilities of the identified priority area they would like to welcome diverse voices to participate in. Uh, then research and identify those diverse voices that are needed, submit recommendations for approval. approval. So then that there's the reporting mechanism, right? You're bringing back what you've learned to the committee to say, hey, this is what we found and this is what we recommend we do to help address that. And then you, you take it a step further to invite and welcome those diverse voices to be a part of a planning process that we're working on. And then you continue building those relationships and make them feel like they are a part, right? Like they, they belong as a part of our process ongoing. So that, as an example, that's another one where there's, you know, there's research, there's um, investigations, there's identifying the gaps, right? There's um, then a recommendation or a report back to the full committee and a recommendation. And then there's actions to then create those relationships and invite participation. Um, so I think with all of those, with all of them in here, 
there's usually a step that says consideration submitted to APPC for approval or something like that. So to me, that's the reporting mechanism where mm -hmm. you're somehow sharing what you gathered, what you've learned back with the full committee, and there can be a discussion about it and there can be a, a recommended action that comes out of that. Are these documents public? Not, well, they, yes. I mean, they've been attached to our agendas for the last mm -hmm. however many meetings we've been discussing this. So they are public. They're not on our website. You would have to go to an agenda to, to find the attachment. Uh, would it be okay to share them with people who might be mm -hmm. interested? Yeah, for sure. I think that they're, they still are a draft at this point. So yeah. there's nothing formal that's been adopted or approved yet. But mm -hmm. as long as that's clear with folks, yes, please get input on it. Thanks. Um, so I guess if there's, I mean, I don't, anyone can please chime, chime in again, but it, it, it's, is it helpful to take this and put it in that spreadsheet view and have folks kind of indicate their interests in the tasks in that way, rather than keeping them divided into the three task forces? Is that kind of a unanimous direction? Or is there still kind of like, well, they're fine the way they are kind of in the in the groupings. I guess I'd like to know how to best move forward to support right. the next step. Yeah. One question. question. Oh, yeah. Then, so um, Kis Kisman Creative mm -hmm. created this draft mm -hmm. uh, with this model of three separate task groups, right. task force. So uh, there seems to be, a, a, there's like a question or concern. Is it possible um, that they can recreate this in any way so that the committee feels like it's a more um, uh, it's a more, it's a more committee wide mm -hmm. uh, approach rather than isolated because it seems to be that there seems to be fear that some people are like oh no I'm stuck on a task force and I have to do this mm -hmm. work or like that where we feel like one or the other could pick up the slack when one is missing. Mm -hmm. um, that yeah, that's I think what the idea if the language in there was spelled out that way, then maybe the committee might feel more comfortable about it. The, what language exactly? Well, uh, the, the idea of like, you know, um, here's two hours a month and then just the fact that the work, the task forces have to be isolated to three people or less. Mm -hmm. um, so in the event that a task force volunteer is unavailable to work on their task uh, for, um, uh, for that meeting or that particular period, mm -hmm. is another committee member allowed to step in mm. and assist that task force when one is out yes i see what you're saying um i think that some version of that is definitely possible mm -hmm. i i i would encourage everyone to not feel like there is a if it helps to have deadlines and milestones and things to keep things moving on i completely understand that but there isn't an intention to say if you don't complete this by this date you know, it's over. That was all for nothing. I mean, you know, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, this is open-ended. This is and we'll ongoing go work. I mean, there are things that hopefully will happen within, what, a year time, two years time? I, you know, I don't know what reasonable timelines mm -hmm. really are, and I'm totally open to changing them throughout the time. The sure. timelines that were put in here. Um, so this is very flexible work. Yeah. And secondly is, although it is work, it it should not bog down or hold up any of our more serious committed timeline projects where right. we are overseeing and approving budgets, right? Right. Those things would kind of be prioritized on right. our regularly scheduled meetings. Exactly. So we wouldn't be harming any of our necessary and dutiful work, but at the same time, we might be adding in some very fruitful and productive side work. Mm -hmm. And we could be supportive of one another to not uh, harm any committee member in forcing them to you know, put in labor hours that they can't afford in their time budget already. Yeah, but totally. for those that are able to add in or volunteer any time that they can above and beyond, it would be greatly appreciated. Yes. And so if that answer. kind of language was in the document so that people could see that flexibility, okay. maybe yeah. that'll help. Okay, I gotcha. Um, I think the other thing is, yeah, I mean, if, if like, if three folks are signing up next to a task that they want to work on, and then two of them end up want, you know, not having the time and are, are dedicated to something else, and that one person can't do it all themselves. I mean, I think that there can be an ongoing discussion about that. Like, hey, I still really want to work on this. I need someone's help. Can anyone help me just with this one task for the next month? 
it doesn't, it, I think that the groupings can be flexible as long as we're not doing any kind of the violations of too many people meeting together or mm -hmm. communicating. Yeah. So yes, that flexibility can exist. Is sure. that how you see the, um, as far as signing up for individual tasks, is that how you see the spreadsheet versus this? Yes. So you're saying, okay, I could sign up for this uh, assignment task, which falls under the community engagement, and I can also sign up for this task that is in the uh, yep. a different task. Yep. Yep. So I think that perhaps that would be helpful because yeah. I don't know that I specifically on one of these committees really have the expertise for mm -hmm. all of these individual yep. things that people, you know, I, I may not have, I may be interested in community engagement, but I don't have a whole lot of business contact. You know, that's what right. Doing. Yeah. So I think it might be helpful mm -hmm. to see. I wasn't around when the spreadsheet or any of this was developed. So it might be helpful to see the spreadsheet and then mm -hmm. can line up with some different tab, you know. Right. Yeah. And I like the idea of a ranking system. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's, I feel like the report backs could be a much richer, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sort of exchange of information like that maybe that's the time when you know we're all here we can compare notes on things and I agree. trade out tasks and stuff mm -hmm. so i you know I, I can see that working okay. I, also, I, I feel like things have kind of been you know sitting yeah. <laughs> um, stagnant <laughs> and i feel like there's enough here to start you know and Maybe once we're moving, it makes more sense to me to restructure things in a, in, in a way that's informed by that motion. Okay. Just, just personally. Yeah. But well, one thing I, I really do appreciate about this is there is a structure to it. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I don't want to question the uh, this strategic intelligence of, of this particular mm -hmm. structure. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I guess I'm really jumping off of what you just said, Nathan, that um, maybe the thing to do is let's, let's move forward and um, let's work on process amongst ourselves so that we can make, make a very um, good effort at using this structure effectively and, and working through these um, tasks. And if, if we can prioritize effectively and we can communicate effectively, mm -hmm. then... Um, maybe through the process if we want to um, start to reorganize or restructure um, it can inform the work in the future but for right now um, we do we have a work plan mm -hmm. we, there's a there's a strategy to it mm -hmm. um, so um, even though i'm the one who maybe uh, initially prompted the, the question of you know should we be looking at this reconsidering this structure, I'm, I'm starting to feel like the comments and and all of this really good conversation around it leads me to think, well, we haven't given it a chance. <laughs> we really we, it. Yeah, yeah, we haven't actually tried to use it in an effective way. So um, a lot of work's gone into it, and I, I do really appreciate and respect that. Great. Well, it sounds like the spreadsheet view is helpful to everyone. Mm -hmm. So I will prepare that. I mean, and we have a draft of that already. So it's just going back to that format. And then I'll add the columns that we talked about. Um, and then I'll, we'll figure out a way to get that to the committee members so that they can review and then start indicating their areas of interest. Um, and Again, because of Brown Act stuff, I, I have to make sure that we're doing that in an appropriate way. But I think I can send you something, information only that you can review. Um, and then it can be discussed again at the, at the next meeting. Um, but, but hopefully that can be a document that then you can approve or adopt so that then we'll be working towards implementing it. Yeah. Okay, so besides the um, spreadsheet, 
what are next steps? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds like that's, that's the main kind of tool to use to get us to the next step is to have that spreadsheet created with the additional columns, have committee members review and indicate their interest areas, um, update or change timelines as we've discussed, uh, add more flexibility language to kind of the, the whatever kind of document would accompany the spreadsheet. Because if we're getting away from this kind of document, maybe there's just a cover section like this that goes with the spreadsheet and also we'll, we'll update the language related to flexibility for timelines and interchangeable members participating. Um, and then update the progress reporting section of that to also include um, kind of encouraging a more robust conversation and working as a group at regular committee meetings when there's report outs um, for each task. Um, and I think at those report outs, the whole spreadsheet could be reviewed and, and looked at like with, yeah. with status updates yeah. added to it. Yeah. So to me, those, those, I see those as the next steps before yeah. there's any kind of actual work being done on the actual tasks. Okay. Great. So I think because we're heading into, we have a meeting scheduled for November 6th. Yeah. And then after that would be the first Monday in December. We should be able to hold those two meetings, have time on the agenda to keep working on this. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think a realistic goal would be like in January to really start implementing the work on some of these things. Okay. I mean, maybe sooner, but to me, that's... Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it is now 12.15, so we, we have 15 more minutes. I, we can do the next item on okay. the agenda and okay. if everyone's Thanks ready to move on. The discussion. Um, moving to 3.2, program and project updates. Or will present updates on the current programs and projects. This Thank is you. info only. Thanks, let me get out my notes here. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so Jessica's not able to be here in person today, so I have her updates to share. Um, and then I have a few additional updates. These are just our regular project and program updates, but since we haven't had a meeting where we've been able to report out on these for a while, we thought we'd add that to this agenda. So um, there are two wonderful exhibits at the Finley Community Center, one in the Community Center, one in the Person Senior Wing the California Indian Museum Cultural Center and the POMO Project. Those are both on view through November 19th, uh, sorry, 16th and 19th, respectively. Um, there was a reception last Friday. I think Nathan was there in attendance. Thank you for attending, Nathan. So, yeah. Um, uh, so those are our ongoing exhibits. And then our Arts Around projects, the next one coming up, which I encourage all members to attend, is um, Kristen Troop's uh, walking trail installation. Um, there will be kind of a reception and kickoff at the Central Library here downtown on October 29th at 1 p.m. Um, she'll be installing those pieces around um, downtown on downtown sidewalks um, and in parks uh, shortly before that, um, but then that event at the library will be a reception and then you'll be able to go on a walking tour with her to see all of them. Uh, we will also have one more uh, reception coming up for one of the other Art Surround projects, Danny Burleson at Escalar um, it, to celebrate the completion of the chat book she's created, um, but the date is still TBD as far as we know. Okay. Okay, um, for the small business support program, you may have been seeing several new murals popping up by either Art Start or the Mural Project. Um, those, uh, some of those are a part of the small business support program. Um, and there'll be a total of 20 local businesses that will be receiving uh, some kind of mural on their building through, uh, through this program. 
Um, again, some of them are happening now, some of them will happen later, um, but there will be a list distributed to the co committee once we have everything a little bit more solidified, but there are several projects going on right now that you can go take a peek at. Um, Shady Oak um, has one going up on First Street. Uh, the Astro Hotel has one on Juilliard Park Drive. Um, uh, Barrel Proof um, Comedy Club on Mendocino Avenue. Um, I know I'm forgetting some others. I saw, I saw someone working on a mural on uh, near the library. It was black and wolves. That one is not, not a part of this program, okay. but it's great that it's happening at the same time. That one is a project that the business is doing for their art requirements since they did remodeling. Oh. And so they the business has to has to do art on site. Okay. So they're they've hired a muralist to do that project. Um, one with the hair salon. Oh yes. Site. HD Barbershop okay. in Roseland. That is one of the projects. Um, There's also the one in Railroad Square uh, on the back of the Dare, mm -hmm. Daredevils, Daredevils and Queens. And Queens. Yep, you can see oh. that kind of from 3rd Street. There's a little sidewalk and parking lot. You can kind of look through that alleyway. The Soul Desire parking lot. Yeah, Soul Desire. Okay. And then there's one down on Santos Avenue. Mike Chavez painting contractor their building has one. Um, Art Start did, those are all done by the mural project. And then Art Start completed one at Cafe Frida and has about four others coming up. And then there will be more coming up. So it is kind of an ongoing thing. There just happens to be like 10 of them going on right now. Well, and, the, and the mural project just started across the street from the museum on the yes. parking garage. Um, yes, yes. Um, uh, and, and that's a d different, that's. That, uh, that one is unfortunately, it has to be changed. Oh. Um, and won't be taking place at that location. I'll follow up with you more on oh, that. They have yeah. to, they have to move that project. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. We'll talk. So that one's <laughs> not happening, but there is one scheduled for the museum um, on, the, uh, on, on B Street, B Street side. Yeah. yeah. So that one will be coming up, and then, like I said, there's a handful of others that will be coming up. So it's been a, it's a huge kind of unwieldy thing to try to get see all these happening. They're happening through contracts with Art Start and the Mural Project, but. There's, um, like I said, hopefully we will get you a more cohesive list. Um, MJ and Josh, through the Mural Project, did create a postcard to talk about the locations that they're currently working on right now, but that, that's not a comprehensive list, so. Um, okay, so then Fire Station 5 Public Art Project. I, I can't remember if we reported out on this, but we did receive a total of 67 submissions, so that was a very successful oh, call. Yeah. Um, okay. And the selection panel is wrapping up reviewing that their first round of reviews. We have a, a meeting on Friday to look at who are the highest scoring artists and to identify the finalists that will move on. And who is on the um, these two? These two? Yep, Nathan oh, and Double. double. <laughs> and then quickly, um, we do have some upcoming work for this fall, winter. Um, for our conservation and maintenance, they'll be working on our annual bronze maintenance and then replacing um, some of the tiles in the live oak tile mural that's in the transit mall. Um, and then, oh, and then I already gave that one. So, yeah, I think that those are all the updates uh, that we have right now. Great. And then the, anything so. updated on the highway, the um, pedestrian overcrossing for you? Which one? The pedestrian overcrossing. Oh, yeah, no update on that yet. Okay. Um, right now, it's a, it's uncertain exactly the timeline for us to move forward with a call for artists. Um, so we're waiting to get final confirmation on that. But that's, I'll let you know when we're actually starting that process. Okay. Yeah. It looks like people are probably moving into that building. That dorm. The JC yeah, yeah, does like have, yeah, it's got folks happening. in it. And yeah. um, there's actually a new mural in that building too, which mm -hmm. is a, a beautiful new mural, so that's by MJ and Josh with the mural project as well. Wow. And I'll show up at the JC, just not that long ago, uh, Maria de Los Angeles mm -hmm. did yep. a mural inside the um, foundation right. office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she also has two murals over at LBC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I saw those. I got to be part of a workshop she did. Oh, with good. Them, good. With the fire mm -hmm. survivors. I'm not one, but I got to be part of it. Oh, great. Any other questions or comments about this? Okay, we'll move on. The next thing, which is adjournment, I believe.
Yes. <laughs> so the next regular meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee is scheduled for Monday, November 6th. Watch your calendars. Thank you, everyone. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'll just take a little print another one.